to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. Taste of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us, whoever believes in him. We'll live forever Bring all your fears Bring your addictions Come lay them down at the foot of the cross Jesus is waiting there With open arms For God so loved The world that he gave us His one and only Save us, whoever believes in will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so love, God so love the world. Praise God. What 
that you do set our hearts on you come and do what you do this is me this is me miracles happen when you move healing is coming in this room miracles happen when you move heaven is coming it's here right now here right now miracles happen when God, we call out to you this morning. Continue to move in our hearts, move in our lives, mold us, refine us, shape us into kingdom workers, people on fire for you. God, we worship you this morning, you alone. name we pray. Amen. You guys can be seated. Hey, how's everybody doing today? All I have to say is let's go Eagles. Hey, we love you guys. We've been praying for you and just glad we get to do an online chapel today. Uh, so whatever classroom you're watching with uh, your teachers or wherever you happen to be in the building, uh, we're, glad, we're glad that you're with us and that you're watching. And we just believe uh, God has greatness in front of you and we just know that this is going to be an incredible uh, semester so get ready for it so i want to re uh, review a couple things the first thing we talked about two weeks ago you probably remember uh is being spiritually fat being faithful available and teachable and last week we talked about how to act like a wolf and i gotta say you guys were cracking me up in the hallways this week because you were howling and making all sorts of noises, telling me what your favorite animal was. So thank you for watching. And also thank you for uh, catching what the message was all about, because you guys told me all sorts of great stuff that you learned, and I appreciate the feedback. So, but today I want to move to a new topic, and I want to talk to you about capacity. I want to talk about this word capacity. And, and let's, before we get into our points, let's go to Colossians. Uh, chapter 2, verse 7, Colossians chapter 2, verse 7, it says this, let your roots, your roots, your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong. You got to help me out here on the count of three, uh, whatever classroom you're in, we're going to say grow strong together. So nudge your neighbor, say they have to participate. Okay, now nudge your other neighbor who was your second choice. Uh, and tell them they have to participate. And on the count of three, let's say grow strong as a school together. I give you permission to say it loudly, okay? One, 
two, three, grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. I love this verse because it's a picture of growing. It's a picture of expanding and it's a picture of our capacity. And what is our capacity? And so the word has a lot to say about it, but uh, I'm going to show it like this just to kind of give you a visual. Uh, maybe this was kind of your capacity when you were younger. Uh, maybe this a couple years ago, this looked more like your capacity. And here's the thing about capacity, and this is, don't laugh at me, this is my wife's picture, okay, it's girly. Uh, the girls will like it though. She, I think she makes like green tea and stuff and puts it in here. But you might have this huge availability of uh, parents that are incredible, teachers that are awesome, uh, leaders, uh, pastors even, um, all sorts of great people in your life that have a lot to pour into you. But if your capacity is small, they can only pour so much in, right? Because now it's full and it doesn't matter how much is left. We can keep pouring and pouring, but if all you can contain is this, that's where you stop, then that's all you can get, even if you're surrounded by incredible wise people, right? And then my prayer is, is that as you start to get older and mature and you dedicate yourself to, to your studies, learning the scripture, uh, learning the Bible, then maybe you'll grow and be something more like this, that this is actually double the capacity, double the size of the other glass. Now the picture and the ability for people to pour into you didn't change, but your ability changed to receive more to hear more, to be more available, to be more teachable, so that you can be a deeper Christian like it was talking about in Colossians. And my prayer is that we continue to grow in this capacity. So I want to go to another portion of scripture that talks about this, and it's in Isaiah. If you have your Bible, turn there with me. But it's Isaiah chapter 54, Isaiah 54, and I'm going to read verse 2 to you. And it says this, enlarge the place of your tent. How many like to go camping? Any campers out there? <laughs> enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. I want to say that for somebody listening to me uh, this morning. Don't hold back. This is such a great opportunity for your life. You go to an amazing school. I've talked to many of you. You're great athletes or you're great musicians or artists, you're great at writing. Uh, man, God's giving you all those gifts for a reason. He made you a masterpiece is what the word says. And that, that he has so much in you, but we just can't hold back. We've got to grow our capacity so he can fill us up to another level. So Isaiah talks about it. Colossians talks about it. But I want to talk about two specific areas to grow our capacity. And uh, yes, I have my coffee today. This is uh, another mug. I like all mugs because mugs represent coffee to me. So it's my jam. Uh, but this one is pretty cool. And then I like this. It says this red looks good on me. So uh, I agree with my Emmett. Uh, you know what? I need to hear this today. Last time we talked about animals, I want to hear what your favorite candy is this week. M&Ms are definitely high up for me. I also have to say Reese's Cups specifically. Now watch this. If you haven't tried this, this could change your life. Reese's Cups in the freezer. You see that? If you grow your capacity, you're going to learn more ways to eat candy the right way. But I want to talk about two areas that, that God is going to grow your capacity this year, okay? So the first one, and for all the middle schoolers, we're going to be talking about this at tribe time as well. A little bit and because uh, it's so important but we have to grow our identity capacity we have to grow our identity capacity and uh, I want to talk a little bit about that because there's two incredible days in your life there's two incredible days in your life that will change that, that will change your life forever so here, here's the two days okay as we grow our identity capacity Number one is your birthday. Come on, make some noise if you like your birthday. Your birthday is fun. In fact, I say in my house, 
that my birthday is a holiday. It is an official holiday in the Bagwell house. Um, so that's important. I bet you liked your birthday too. Uh, I was in one of the classes and they had a really cool big hat on and we're celebrating a young lady who, um, just celebrated her birthday. And I was so excited about that, uh, because you should celebrate your birthday. It was a big deal when you got here, but here's the second best day of your life. Okay. Are you ready? When you got here and the second best thing is when you figure out why. Now, you know, when you know your identity, you know what you're called to be, you know what your gifts and your talents are, and, and you're not holding back, and you're giving everything you can to expand those skill sets, I'm telling you that's a great day in your life. Uh, for me, uh, I remember uh, just discovering, man, I really feel called to ministry. I really feel called to help churches. I feel called to help schools. I feel um, called to, like, places like Secor that help feed people. And I just found out that I come alive when I serve and when I teach and I help other people find their giftings. And so hopefully this year, we're going to continue to find the giftings that are in you. And all I ask, don't hold back. We've got to grow our identity capacity. Uh, Philippians chapter three, verse 13 says it this way. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. And he's a lot older than you guys are uh, when Paul was writing this. But he's like, I've accomplished a lot of great things, but I, I don't consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. What was Paul saying? Don't hold back. I've accomplished a lot of great things, but I still... I'm going to forget what was behind me, and I'm going to strain towards what's ahead. Come on, we as a school, we have got to give it our all every day that we show up for class, every time we come to chapel, every time we have opportunities when we're playing sports. Don't go out there and go halfway. Give it everything you've got. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing it right. So grow our identity capacity, and here's the second one. I want to see us grow our risk capacity, grow our risk capacity. Well, what are you talking about, Mr. Bagwell? Well, a lot of times we don't see great things happen in our life if we're too afraid to take the risk. And I want to let you know, life has a lot of places where you're going to take some risks. Um, you know, now I I speak a lot in front of people and I have for years. I get on cameras like this and record chapels. And so I'm pretty used to public speaking. But man, I'll tell you what, the first speech I ever had to give in my high school class, I was a freshman in high school and there were seniors, uh, 12th graders, juniors, 11th. And I was a freshman, I was in ninth. And man, I was so nervous giving my first speech. I remember my hands got sweaty. I remember I was kind of shaking even a little bit. I was holding the notes and the notes were just like in my hand, just, you know, shaking a little bit. Um, but you know what? It was one of the best risks that I ever taken. It wasn't the best speech or message I've ever given, but it was one of my first ones. And many times when you do something for the first time, it's nerve wracking. I mean, even joining a new baseball team, joining a new uh, group of young ladies doing gymnastics, all these different opportunities. But at some point, we've got to grow our risk capacity that, yeah, maybe it's uncomfortable. Maybe I've never done it before. Maybe this makes my heart. I don't know if you get that, but your heart starts racing. I get butterflies in my stomach when I get nervous. But you know what? Sometimes you have to grow the risk capacity in your life. You've got to take a shot. Don't hold back. Allow your capacity to grow. What will happen is you take identity capacity as that begins to grow and then your risk capacity begins to grow. Maybe over the years, even your time here at this amazing school at Southeast, maybe you go from here <laughs> to here because you have a lot more room and a lot more ability because you have allowed the People, teachers, the things that you're reading, that you're studying, it's all right here. That library is packed with books, information's all over the place, but we've got to grow the ability to receive it. And what my prayer for you is today is that God 
supernaturally begins to grow you to the highest capacity that you can have. And that when you finish eighth grade, I know some of the eighth graders are finishing, um, that you don't walk out of those doors getting ready for high school <laughs> looking like this when you have the opportunity to look like this. God wants to fill you. And here's the neat part. One of the verses in Psalms chapter 23 declares that your cup will run over. Well, why do I need to have a capacity like this? You need it because there are people, whether you know it or not, in your future that are counting on you. I don't know. I talked about the two best days of your life, the day you're born and the day you figure out why. I'm not going to be able to figure out why for you. It's something that you're going to have to search God for and begin to analyze the giftings that are within you. But I believe this, God's going to grow you. God's going to grow you. So, hey, before we finish up, I want to pray for you. You have so many incredible teachers and principals and faculty and uh, man, they're, they're really lifting you up and praying for you. And I just want you to know that I am here. So we're still finishing up my uh, room. I'm not even calling it an office. Uh, I got to figure out a cool name. If you would help me name it uh, this week, that would be kind of fun. I don't know what to name it. Maybe uh, something to do with candy. I don't know. But um, <laughs> my room is almost finished. And I want you to know that you're welcome to stop by anytime. I've had several of you actually stop by this week. So thank you. And several people came by and had prayer requests. And same thing um, for teachers. If there's anything I can pray for, anybody that works in the school, I'm here for you guys. And, uh, you know, the word says iron sharpens iron. And sometimes it's just good to have somebody in the corner fighting with you spiritually. So uh, let's pray and let's make it a great day today. It's going to be a great day. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you for every student represented here. I thank you for all the incredible staff that make this a reality. And, Lord, we just pray today that your presence will fill our classrooms, our hallways, the gymnasium, wherever your sons and daughters are, that, Lord, they will just fill your presence. Lord, that they will know that you're with them. And, God, we just ask you whatever prayer requests, whatever need, anyone who's personally sick or um, anybody has family members who are struggling or just friends, Lord, just be with them, comfort them, and uh, just allow their bodies to strengthen. And Father, we just thank you for covering us, for leading us, filling us with your joy, and filling us with your love. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys. Hey, make it a great day today. Uh, I'm going to sip a little bit more coffee. I'll probably be seeing you around in a few minutes. In a tribe time, get ready, middle school. We're going to have some fun today. So, hey, I'll see you next Tuesday. I believe we'll still be online. We'll let you know if that changes, uh, but I enjoyed being with you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.